I'm the daughter of a merchant mother and gangster father. So I grew up with one foot in each world, my mind armed with the tricks of both trades. When my history torn between metrics and mysteria, I chose the path less traditional into the gangland underbelly of the pits, where chaos and order colludes over organized crimes. My only allegiance lies with the mysterious spider and its interlacing web of contract killers. For the right price, I'm the mastermind. Some say I'm an assassin of remarkable skill who makes the mark and secures their demise. Tidy is the way I like it. No loose ends. My tactics? Always a step ahead. I picture every pathway, predict every single consequence, and use this ability to weave the threads. I understand that information is the foundation upon which any good strategy is built, and one should never pen a contract on the flip of a blood-soaked coin. I am on the top of my game, and no one will ever play it better. Today we will be looking at Azuri Switchblade. If you don't know the fundamentals and general game mechanics, I strongly suggest watching the Learn to Play Guides by LSS. Link will be in the description. Make sure to also visit the Heroes of Fab section for additional information. Azuri was first introduced in the Flesh and Blood set Outsiders in March 2023. The ringleader of a band of misfits, Azuri prides herself on clean kills. She takes her work seriously and is loyal to no one, except to the elusive spider organization. Let's have a look at her hero ability. Once per turn attack reaction, banish a card from your hand face down. Turn the card banished this way face up. If it's an attack action card with cost 2 or less, put targeting attack card with stealth from the active chain link on the bottom of its owner's deck. Then put the banished card onto the active chain link as the attacking card. Stealth alone is nothing, but in the hands of a trained assassin, it is everything. Stealth is a keyword found on certain assassin cards that can enable powerful effects when combined with the right tools. Master the art of stealth to get the job done quickly and quietly. No fuss, no muss. After our opponent has declared blocks on a stealth attack action, as an attack reaction, we can banish a card from hand face down. Then we reveal it. If the cost is two or less, put the attacking stealth card to the bottom of our deck and replace it with the banish attack without paying its cost, making Azuri very difficult to defend properly. Since the banished card is put onto the chain link as the attacking card, it is not considered to be played. You do not choose targets, select modes, pay on play costs, or trigger on play or on attack effects, as you normally would if you typically played or attacked with a card. This means you can bypass certain conditions for cards to be played, or negative effects that triggers on attack. We will provide examples later on the video. Azuri has access to many different weapons. The first one we will look at is Spider's Bite. Once per turn action, for two resources, attack for one. Go again. This may look expensive and unassuming, but don't be fooled. Firstly, it has piercing. If it's defended by an equipment, it has plus one. Secondly, when this hits a hero, the next time to defend with one or more attack action cards this turn, those cards will have minus one armor while defending. The next three daggers all have the same cost and piercing one, but have different on-hit effects. Orbito class on-hit punishes opponents that want to defend with non-attack actions, such as wizards. Nerf Scalpel will be reaction cards often played by rangers, guardians, and warriors. And lastly, Scale Peeler, on-hit punishes equipment block. This one is particularly good versus hero that heavily relies on their equipment. Let's have a look at some budget equipment that can be used with this hero. There is not many assassin specific equipment, but I gathered a short list of some decent budget options. First, we have the Mask of the Shifting Perspectives, a common assassin ninja head equipment. It says, attack reaction, destroy Mask of the Shifting Perspective. Whenever a dagger hits this turn, you may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck. If you do, draw a card. This is an interesting one. Being able to react to one of our daggers hitting to fix our hand is pretty decent. 
It also has a block value of 1. Do note, being a blade break equipment, when the combat chain closes, if this defended, it will be destroyed. For our budget chest equipment, we have a couple of options. Let's have a look at Threadbare Tunic and Blossom of Spring. These award you a resource, but in different ways. Blossom of Spring as an action, you gain a resource and go again. Whilst Threadbare Tunic, you can gain a resource at instant speed. Just be mindful that you can only activate this ability if you have no cards in hand. For budget arm equipment, we do have blade cuff and toxic tips, but I'll be honest here, I think these are not terrific and would probably only use these for the one armor block. There are some great options for generic equipment, so do have a look. For example, in the leg slot, you can use Snapdragon Scalers. As you journey with Azuri, you will have access to the Assassin, Assassin Dual Class cards, and generic card pool. To keep this guide as simple as possible, I will mainly focus on cards from the Dynasty and Outsiders set, with some exceptions. Azuri mainly focuses on cheap stealth attack actions, big disruptive attack actions, and a good mix of attack and defense reactions. Azuri doesn't have a high damage cap like aggro decks, but she has access to some great disruption. Hidden information is a huge part of Azuri's game plan. The fact that we switch an attack during the reaction phase after our opponent has declared a block can be leveraged in many different ways. Let's have a look at some standout stealth cards that can be used with this hero. Backstab. Defense reactions can't be played to Backstab's chain link. This one demands respect, since defense reactions can be played on this one. Isolate is another great stealth card that simply says dominate. The dominate effect means your opponent can only defend the attack with a single card from hand. This includes playing defense reactions from their hand. Note, your opponent can still block with available equipment as well as play defense reaction from their arsenal. Infect, Sedate, and Wither all have the same cost, block, and attack power, but with different nasty on-hit effects that will create negative token auras. Infect creates blood rot pox, Sedate creates inertia, and Wither creates the Frailty token. Do note, if you use Azuri's ability to switch a stealth attack action card, the on-hit trigger will no longer be active and no token aura will be created. Let's have a look at all three token auras. First, we have Blood Rot Pox. At the beginning of your end phase, destroy Blood Rot Pox. Then it deals two damage to you unless you pay three resources. Next, we have Frailty. Your attack action cards played from arsenal and weapon attacks have minus one attack power. Lastly, we have Inertia. At the beginning of your end phase, destroy Inertia. Then put all cards from your hand and arsenal on the bottom of your deck. Just a few quick notes on these three negative effect token auras. These trigger and resolve in the end phase. There is no priority and it cannot be responded to. The triggered effect resolves before choosing an arsenal card, putting pitched cards on the bottom of your deck and drawing up to your intellect. Lastly, if there is two or more effects that triggers in the end phase, the turn player decides the order that those layers resolve. For example, let's say you control a Blood Rot Pox and Inertia token. You can choose to pay the Blood Rot Pox before the Inertia trigger placing all cards in arsenal. Let's have a look at some big attack actions that can make great bait and switch targets for Azuri's hero ability. Sneak Attack. If you've played or activated an attack reaction this chain link, Sneak Attack has plus 4 attack power. What makes this one a very worthy candidate is if Sneak Attack was put on the active chain link as the attacking card by Azuri's effect, it would have plus 4 attack power, since Azuri's effect is an attack reaction. Pretty nifty. Another amazing target is Death Touch. It says, Death Touch can't be played from hand. When this hits a hero, create a Frailty, Inertia, or Blood Rot Pox token under their control. Since this one cannot be played from hand, by activating Azuri's ability on Death Touch, it is no longer in hand, since it is now being played from the Banish Zone. What makes this one particularly devastating? On hit, you choose one of the three negative effect token auras we have mentioned previously. Depending on your opponent or game state, one may be better than others. There are a great number of attacks that can be used here, so make sure to experiment. 
Next, let's have a look at notable contract cards. Contract is a keyword that was introduced in the Dynasty set on Assassin class cards. When a player is contracted, they are given a set of instructions to complete. If they perform those instructions, they are considered to have completed the contract. Unless otherwise specified, contracts can be completed any number of times while they are active. For most cards, this means while the card is face up, in the arena, on the combat chain, and not defending. There are quite a few contract cards, but we'll keep it brief since these will be covered more extensively once we talk about Arachne Huntsman, another assassin hero. Leave no witnesses. Contract. You are contracted to banish opponent's red cards. Whenever you complete this contract, create a silver token. When this hits a hero, banish the top card of their hand and up to one card in their arsenal. This one has a very potent on-hit effect, especially if they have an arsenal. What makes it even better is if both top deck and arsenal are red cards. Your contract will be completed twice and give you two silver tokens. The silver token has a few applications in this deck, but on its own it says action for three resources, destroy silver, draw a card, go again. We will revisit the silver token shortly. The second example is annihilate the armed. Contract. You're contracted to banish opponent's attack action cards. Whenever you complete this contract, create a silver token. When this hits a hero, banish the top card of their deck. This is a good addition if your opponent plays mostly attack actions. Since we like the element of surprise, let's have a look at some attack reactions. Razor's Edge. Target attack action card with stealth gains plus 3 attack power in red, 2 in yellow, and 1 in blue pitch. Don't have a good target for Azuri's hero ability? With this attack reaction, you can turn your stealth attack action with an on-hit effect as the primary source of damage. Spike with Blood Rot, Frailty, and Inertia function the same way, but with the added bonus of creating one of the dreaded negative aura tokens under your opponent's control. Pair one of these attack reaction to a stealth card mentioned earlier to give them two tokens. Pretty nice. Then we have Shred. This one under the right circumstances can be backbreaking for your opponent. Target card defending an assassin attack gets minus 4 armor this combat chain in red, minus 3 in yellow, and minus 2 in blue. Be mindful that this can only be used on cards defending an assassin attacking card. But there are creative ways to utilize Shred on a card defending your stealth attack before switching in a new attack and retaining the Shred effect. Lastly, we have Concealed Blade. This one is a fun one. It says, target assassin or ninja attack action card gains plus one attack power, and when this hits, equip a dagger from your inventory. Yep, you heard me correctly. Let's come back to this one a little later. Azuri has access to an amazing amount of attack reaction, but also defense reaction cards, such as Fate Foreseen and Sing Below. Make sure to check them out. All heroes have specific specialization cards that can only be played in their respective hero deck. For Azuri, we have Shakedown. If you've played or activated an attack reaction this chain link, Shakedown has, when this hits a hero, choose red, yellow, or blue. They reveal their hand, banish a card of the chosen color. Being a skilled assassin, Azuri will have access to many reactions, making this one easy to turn on. Being able to banish a card of a certain color and also gain hidden knowledge makes this card fantastic. If you are considering playing Azuri, you will have access to higher quality equipment. There are a few options here, so I will cover a few. The first two we will look at utilizes the silver tokens that we mentioned earlier. Red Back Shroud is the first one. While Red Back Shroud is in your graveyard, at the start of your turn, you may destroy two silver you control. If you do, equip Red Back Shroud. Then it says Attack Reaction, destroy Red Back Shroud. The next Attack Reaction card you play this turn costs one resource less to play. It also has an unconditional block value of one. Being a Battle Worn equipment, Red Back Shroud will not be destroyed once the block value has been used. What's really great here is blocking with this equipment, then destroy it by using its Attack Reaction. Use silver to equip it back, with the block value being available again. Amazing value here. Next one is similar. While Black Tech Whisperers is in your graveyard, at the start of your turn, you may destroy two silvers you control. 
If you do, equip Black Tech Whisperers. Then it says, attack reaction, destroy Black Tech Whisperers. Target assassin attack action card gains. When this hits a hero, it gains go again. This one has Battle Worn 1 as well. Flick Knives is an interesting one. It says, once per turn attack reaction, at no cost, target dagger you control that isn't on the active chain link deals 1 damage to target hero. If damage is dealt this way, the dagger has hit, destroy the dagger. This one can be pretty nifty, at no cost, make one of your 2 resource cost dagger deal 1 damage. Do you note, if it deals damage, the dagger in question will be destroyed. But remember that attack reaction concealed blade? If you lost a dagger after utilizing Flick Knife's attack reaction, if concealed blade targets an attack that hits, you can equip a dagger from your inventory. Your inventory is basically your sideboard. In constructed formats, you only have the cards you've registered in your card pool, and they are only in your inventory if you didn't choose them during the start of game procedures. If there are no daggers in your inventory or do not have an empty weapon zone to equip a dagger, the effect will fail. A quick disclaimer before we move on, many heroes benefit from using other generic legendary equipment, and Azuri is no exception but I will not be including these today. All right, let's have a look at a few example hands. Our first example, let's do a simple bait and switch. Our cards are Infect Yellow, Shred Yellow, Sneak Attack Red, and Isolate Yellow. Let's start with one of our Spider Spite, pitching the Yellow Infect. This one will come in for one. Opponent blocks with one card from hand, meaning Spider Spite on hit effect doesn't apply. Next, let's play the yellow stealth card Isolate, at no cost. This one only attacks for 2, but has Dominate. Our opponent blocks for 3 with a card from hand. Here we could play Shred as an attack reaction, but let's keep this one for later. Since blocks were declared, we can now use Azuri's attack reaction, Banishing Sneak Attack face down. Then we turn it face up. Since Sneak Attack is a 2 cost attack action, we can now place the attacking Stealth card Isolate at the bottom of our deck and place Sneak Attack in its place from the Banish Zone. Since Azuri's ability is an attack reaction, Sneak Attack will gain plus 4 attack power. Important note, Isolate did have Dominate, but this doesn't carry over, meaning that our opponent can now use a defense reaction from hand if available. Our opponent has no defense reaction and takes 4 damage. We end our turn placing the yellow shred in Arsenal. Simple, but effective. For our second hand, let's continue from our previous hand, with yellow shred in Arsenal. We had to block with one card on our opponent's turn, and they placed one card in Arsenal. Our three cards are Leave No Witnesses, Infect Red, and Backstab Red. Let's play our red stealth card, Backstab, at no cost. This one will come in for three. Our opponent decides to overblock using one card from hand and one equipment that blocks for two, blocking for a total of five. Since our opponent blocked enough to prevent the on hit from Leave No Witnesses, let's use the yellow shred from Arsenal, targeting their attack action, making it block for minus three armor. Now we can use Azuri's attack reaction, banishing Leave No Witnesses. We then place Backstab at the bottom of our library and place Leave No Witnesses onto the active chain link as the attacking card. Since Backstab is no longer on the active chain link, our opponent can use a defense reaction if available. Note the effect from Shred did target the opponent's attack action that is still blocking. This means its effect is still active. Opponent declares no defense reaction, Leave No Witnesses hits, and its on hit effect will trigger. They must banish a card from the top of their deck and a card from Arsenal. Let's say the cards banished from the top of their deck and the one from Arsenal were Red Pitch. The contract from Leave No Witnesses says you are contracted to banish opponents' red cards. Whenever you complete this contract, create a silver token. We completed the contract twice and create two silver tokens. Pretty sweet. We end our turn and place the Red Infect in Arsenal. For our third example, let's say we have to block with two cards from hand. We have a red spike with blood rot in Arsenal. Our two cards are red wither and red isolate. Alright, let's have a look at what we have here. Since we don't have a switch target, let's keep isolate for a turn where we can force our opponent to block with only one card. Let's play our red wither. 
If this one hits, it will create a frailty token under our opponent's control. Our opponent fully blocks with a card from hand. Blocks are declared. As an attack reaction, let's destroy the red back shroud. Our next attack reaction will now cost one less. Now let's play our spike with blood rot from arsenal at no cost, giving our attack action plus three attack power. Our opponent does not have a defense reaction, meaning wither hits, creating both the frailty and blood rot pox token under their control. We end our turn, placing the red isolate in arsenal. Nasty little turn with very little cards. For our last example, let's combine a few elements. Let's continue from our last turn with the red isolate in arsenal and the red back shroud in graveyard. We have to block with one card in hand, so we have three cards left. Our cards are Annihilate the Armed Red, Infect Blue, and Shake Down. At the start of our turn, let's use the two silvers we created earlier to equip our Red Back Shroud. Next, let's use one of our Spider Spite. Pitching the blue Infect, we will have one resource floating. Our opponent declares no block, meaning the effect is online. The next time they defend with one or more attack action cards this turn, those cards will have minus one armor while defending. With the floating resource, let's play Annihilate the Armed. This is coming for a total of five. Let's say our opponent block with two attack actions. Unfortunately, they will only block for two each due to the spider's bite. Blocks were declared. Let's now use the Black Tech Whisperer's attack reaction. Our assassin attack card Annihilate the Armed will now gain when this hits a hero, it gains go again. Our opponent here declares no defense reaction, meaning annihilate the arm will hit. On hit, our opponent banish a card from the top of their deck. Let's say they banish a non-attack action card. This means the contract failed since we were contracted to banish an attack action card. We did gain go again, so let's now play our red isolate from arsenal. This one will be coming for three dominate. They block with one card from hand. Since block have been declared, we can now use Azuri's attack reaction, banishing Shakedown face down. We turn it face up, now we can place the attacking stealth card isolate at the bottom of our deck and place Shakedown in its place from the banish zone. Our opponent has no defense reaction, meaning Shakedown will deal damage. Since Azuri's ability is an attack reaction, Shakedown's on hit is active. When this hits a hero, we can choose red, yellow or blue. They only have one card in hand. So let's call for blue. They show the card in hand, and it's a blue attack action card called Wrecker Romp. Since it's the chosen color, they banish the card. But wait, remember Annihilate the Arm that we played earlier? It said, Contract. You are contracted to banish opponent's attack action cards. Whenever you complete this contract, create a silver token. A contract is active while it's face up in the arena. Since Shakedown banished a blue attack action card, this means you have fulfilled the contract and create a silver. Great disruptive turn here. To conclude, Azuri can build in a lot of great creative ways and gets the job done quickly and quietly. No fuss. After all, she's at the top of her game and no one will ever play it better. This was Jackie for the Fab Workshop. See you next time and thanks for watching.